music. Where's our music? I can't even set up yet. Next. Disclaimer. Yep. All right. Um. All right, Becky, I'm going to kill the mics, and uh, feel free to start recording. The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts of Between Terminas on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome our friends watching on the local voice on SoundCloud. And those watching us on Orient Neighborhood Television. Yes. Uh, we got Ian Locke here. Yes, I am back. Yes, you are. I, I guess I can't say I'm back. I haven't gone anywhere. No, you haven't. I'm still here. No, you haven't. <laughs> yes. Um, a lot of a lot of champions crowned. We had two state champions in girls. One in girls swimming, one in girls volleyball. Yeah, exciting um, weekend. Very exciting weekend. Um of course, um, and then of course we have one football team in the state final. Yes. The other team went Lost a bye, tough bye. one. Yep. Um, and then some basketball <laughs> controversy. More drama. More drama over at Detroit Renaissance. And we'll get to that. But let's go to our first um, topic, which is um, girls volleyball. Yes. Of course, um, there is a OA champion now in the um, first in the um, league and in league history. Lake Orion yeah. Dragons take home the um, state championship, their first ever, and. Um, in convincing fashion, knocking off the Rockford Rams in four games. Yes. Um, but when you look at the game that really got them to that point <laughs> was the semifinal game against the Farmingdale's Mercy Marlins, um, where they that was a instant classic where yes. that one went five games. Um, Not only five games, but down to the fifth game was nail biter too. It was a nail biter. I mean, like bull. I mean, like. When you really look at that matchup, of course, game one um, went to Farm Tales Mercy. Um, but Lake Orion found um, they were getting some momentum. They, they started to um, yeah. They started were get, they started that groove late in the first in the first set, and then the second set they just took over and it became a street fight from here on <laughs> out. Um, now Farm Tales Mercy they got some players. They got they some are loaded. Players. They are loaded. loaded. Loretta Vogel's team really loaded. When you look at players like. Um, Jessica Merzak, a um, a um, likely will be the odds-on favorite next year for Miss Volleyball in the state of Michigan. Um, but what she did, I mean, like she, of course, she played on the de the United You're, States developmental team. Yeah. Um, and they don't just take anybody. No, they don't take yeah. anybody. She had twenty-seven kills in that matchup. But the story was Paige Briggs. Yes. Paige Briggs had forty-three kills in that game. 43. 43. Are you serious? <laughs> 43 yeah. kills. Wynn McCauley also went nuts, too. She had 53 assists. Yep. Um, I mean, like, um, she had 53 assists, 12 digs, 3 aces. Yeah. Sierra Livingway had 21 digs and 5 aces yeah. in that matchup. I, all experienced. Been there a long time in the system. Though, uh, you know, Ren McCauley, been watching her play for... Her whole high school career, better and better and better year after year, and just did a number. I mean, unbelievable. And don't forget, Sam. I don't know if the viewers know. Uh, Lake Orion went as the number two ranked, ranked team, team state. and Farm Tales Mercy was number one. Number state. one. So could you say that was the de facto state championship game? Yeah, and I could have been. Yeah, could have been. It could have been because one versus two in a semi. It could have been because. Um, both teams had a ton of talent. Mm -hmm. Lake Orion has mentioned 10 of 18 of their players are seniors. Yeah. You look at Farm Tales Mercy, virtually a young, There's they got a lot of talent. They got a lot of, they're junior heavy when you look at the players they had. Um, I think the most interesting one, the difference of that game was what happened to Farm Tales Mercy. This player, um, Kayla Shields, the libero. Got she got hurt in the fifth set. Huge loss. Which forced the Marlins to change a lot of their things around. Yes. But Lake Orion was gaining momentum and confidence. They were in that matchup. 
and it ended up turning it ended up being a street fight. You know, yeah. it went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But at the end of the day, you know, Lake Orion found a way to win that game. Now, Farnsworth Mercy had won four of the last five against Lake Orion yes. during the season. They were like sixty three and nine or something on the season. They haven't lost a game or a. Farnsworth Mercy really hadn't like, lost a set, a set. since September the 29th, yes. the Celine Invitation. Which is mind-boggling. They had not lost a set. They were a freight train. Lake Warrior hadn't lost a set since October 2nd. And that was a Stony Creek match. Yeah. So something both, had to give. Both teams were playing at peak performance. Lake Orion got out of the... Uh, the the initial rounds. The district round. They got 3-0. by their Clarkson I mean, they effect. They swept everybody. They swept Clarkson, swept Stony Creek. I mean, those are teams. Those are huge. Tough. Uh, tough teams, tough squads to get through, and they swept them. And they were on a mission. And what did you say? Beginning of the season, Sam. They stay healthy. They stay healthy. They stay healthy. Watch out. Watch out. And that's what happened. But they really didn't stay healthy during the year. Of course, you mm-hmm. know, Sidney Smith ankle injury yeah. really – Kind of derailed their league hopes, you know yes. what I mean? Because they did not win the red this year. Yeah, um, Stony Creek won that. Yep. Um, and you see that with teams, though. Some championship teams, um, we've seen it. You don't win your league, but you re- you double your efforts. You get mm-hmm. back, and it makes you angry. Get you motivated. It gets you motivated too. I mean, like, um, but Paige Briggs. <laughs> I, I could not believe. No, when I saw the number forty three, yeah, forty three kills. That she just went insane. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know. Um, in the press conference, when McCauley said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna," I mean, like, you got to feed your hot hand. Yeah, and the hot hand was Paige. Yeah, and Mercy really had no answer for Briggs. No, nope. none. And there, uh, who's it? The I think the Free Press, it's either the Free Press or M Live. I can't remember who uh, was poking around just trying to get some information on it. The game. They've been televised in the past yes. on Fox Sports, but they decided to go to a pay system this year. So I don't know why they did. You know, that. we didn't we didn't get to see, you know we didn't see it because we didn't pay. So right. you're, we're just dying for information. So Twitter was keeping us, um, you know, in line. Twitter of what kept was, us updated. What yes. was going on? What was going on? Yep. I had my um, I had I had my people texting me. Yeah, and what was going on? So we were just on pins and needles, going you know any type of you know of course we're partial because this you know we're Lake Orion. And we've seen these girls play for years. Or Posh OA. Yeah, yeah, well, OAA and, you know, for Lake Orion guys, at least for, for me, I can say that you're the yeah, – I'm the, I'm the, uh, the but, partisan. Um, but anyway, seeing the – trying to get any information. But they had some video highlights. They had some clips of different kills that Paige had. And it's not just ram it down your throat. They were – you know, some were just falling for her. Like, she, they, they, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the set up there for her to kill it, and it was, oh, she killed it. Hit the net, bounced off a hand, went to the ground. I mean, everything was falling for it. It was one of those days, like, you know, you play hoops with your buddy on the side yard, uh-huh. you know, in the summertime, and you throw you, you, everything you throw up goes in. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's what happened. That's here. what happened here. So when I look at it, when I look at that matchup, you know, Jessica Merzak had 27 kills yeah. for Farm Sales Merzak. She was rolling too. She was rolling too. I mean, but very interesting. That both coaches would question the officiating in that matchup. See, that was that that's was question. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So this after the match, I mean, we don't get to have the inside details if you didn't watch it, right? You wouldn't know, or if you weren't at the, if you weren't um, there, or if you weren't, weren't at the Battle venue, Creek. correct? And wa- looking at the highlights, I'm like, oh, great highlights! This is fantastic. We get to see some action, and then in the article, we had some of the press. Uh, Drew Ellis at my prep zone yeah. um, did Unreal. a really good job. Unreal what um, uh, they were saying about the referee. Yeah, I mean, like, um, and Drew Ellis said that um, that the officiating was really spotty. Um, Tony Scavarda, the Lake Orion coach, said that um, that it was really spotty at best. Yeah. Um, but Loretta Vogel, she just went off. off yeah. On the MHSA and the um, and the um, vo- and the um. Volleyball um, and the coach. This crew, is what yeah. she said. I just put it up in the Oakland Press. I want to make it clear. I want to make it real clear for women's athletics. I thought it was embarrassment to have these officials, what they call for women that practice every day in the gym. It was an embarrassment. I would like to say even the Michigan 
even more, the Michigan High School Athletic Association should be embarrassed hiring people of, ca- of that caliber who calls a five seconds on a serve. Yeah. It's an embarrassment. When I read that, the five seconds on a serve, it's like, huh? How many? You're knee deep in OA volleyball, Sam. And yes. You help out the games. I've even I've even line judged. You know, I've even done the yes. line judging. Yeah, and you know we're there covering games for years and watching these games for years. Not one time in my nine years or plus, well, a decade of looking at these games, calling these I've games, never seen filming these games. I've never I've, seen. I've never seen a five second call. A five second call against a team like um, regular season or regular otherwise. Season or otherwise, I've never seen it. Not in my years announcing. Not even in my um. <laughs> To be honest, in my ears, like, I didn't even know it was volleyball. a rule. I, I guess it was, <laughs> but the question and to that call you, it in a, in a in a semifinal game. That's somebody who's right off the uh, right out of class. Somebody who's right out of class, or somebody <laughs> that's just. I mean, like you know, I said about a couple weeks ago about that side judge during Lake Orion Clark's football game. You did that was horrible there, but it looks like here, well, on both sides, it was very spotty. And to have the prevent, you know, the, the team that wins, their coach say something too, it means there was something, you know. Obviously, it was. I'll read more from Loretta what she said tough here. Sledding. Um, she said, "Quote, just saying, Lake Orion won, and I'm happy with that. However, I've been around a long time, yeah, and I've endured a lot. I'm not. I'm taking nothing away from Lake Orion. We knew when we've been there. I think the Michigan High School Athletic Association needs to do a better job." Watching what went on earlier, it was really sad. Yeah. And Tony Scavada, this was his comment. I was very disappointed with the officiating at the stage of this tournament. A lot of bad calls made on both sides of the net. The R1 was extremely inconsistent. That means the um, right official. The okay. right side official. Um, and the players even felt it. You know, the players in that one even felt it. Yeah. Um, Drew Ellis done a really good job. Um. She got a comment from Mercy's um, Jessica Merzak. Um, she said, quote, it's hard when the refs are calling it on both teams, things that are usually never adjusted. Yeah. It kind of switches switches on them in the flow of the game. Yeah. It's hard on both teams. Yeah. You know, and then Mercy's assistant coach, Andrew Thompson, son of Loretta Vogel. Um, she said, he said, I've been around volleyball for 34 years, and we're talking, uh, and we're talking about this as we arrived. Loretta's been in the final four ten times, and yeah. I've been in every single one of those except for two. I won a state championship myself. It's an embar- it's, it is embarrassing, and I'm calling on the MHA. It's embarrassing for female athletics in 2018. Boys football is at Ford Field, and I get it. It's money. Basketball gets Breslin. Girls get Kellogg, Kellogg Arena, and it's a treatment, and the treatment – that female athletics gets is absolutely embarrassing and it needs to change. So they're kind of wrapping the quality of the officiating, which they're saying is subpar, and the venue. They're kind of putting it together saying, well, the girls get what they get. Right? I mean, that's basically what he's saying well, and they're the upset thing. with it. Well, here's the thing, though. And I, ha- I tend to agree, Sam. I do agree with it. So you want to hear, here's my experience with this. Uh, swimming is my background. That's yeah. what I did in high school and did it for years, right? Mm-hmm. The guys... State finals were either at University of Michigan or Eastern Michigan. Two right. of, back in back in the nineties, two thousands, the two best pools in this state. Right? Where did the girls swim? They swam at some community college or a small college, you know, out west somewhere. I mean, they didn't even get the top billing in a venue. I mean, now it's kind of changing because we saw. Uh, they swam at Eastern. D- D1 girls just D1 swam, girls at Eastern. swam at Eastern. And then Oakland University has a fantastic facility, yep, and they swam, swam over D2. there. So it's changed somewhat, but I agree. Over the years, why do the guys get U of M Volleyball was Eastern? at Western Michigan for a while, yes. and then they went to Kellogg, Kellogg Arena. Is I'm it not because sure there's why, not enough attendance? I'm not sure if, if it, attendance could be an issue. I'm not sure. But, but you, you go know. to Ford Field, they're not filling no, that they're place. they're not. <laughs> they're not filling that place up. You know, if I mean, you're but basically, it's a, but it's a dome, so you, you mean because of the weather and the potential, right? So it's a dome, dome stadium, but but either way, I think that I do think the girls deserve better. They do deserve better. You know, now this year in girls basketball, they're playing at Calvin College, yeah. because Michigan State had a conflict 
with the Breslin Center. Well, then play at Chrysler. Can you play at Jenison Fieldhouse, yeah. for goodness sakes? Yeah, yeah. You know? Great venue. Gr- volleyball, I think personally, I think volleyball should play their state final at Jenison. Because Jenison Fieldhouse, middle middle yep. of the state. Great venue. Great venue. Yep. Um, plenty of seating. Plenty of seating, yep. you know, and it makes a lot of sense for them to play there. Yeah. I mean, if you can't use Breslin for um, girls' basketball, you can use Jenison Fieldhouse. I mean, they used to play basketball at Jenison Fieldhouse. Oh, yeah. Yep. Why not just <laughs> use the basketball court and make it into Jenison Fieldhouse? Yeah. It, it, and I, I tend to agree with that. But some of this, I think, is boiling up because of the refereeing and, you know, they lost. So the partisans on their side are like, oh, they're, all the complaints they've had over the years are kind of boiling. To but the here's top. the thing with Final Tales Mercy. They recruit. You know what I mean? They recruit. That's true. They recruit. I mean, you look at players who Mercy recruits from. Yeah. They recruit from everywhere around the state. And, you know, you look at Lake Orion, you know what I mean? They don't they don't get a I mean, they they're homegrown developed players. Yep. I mean, they'll get a couple transfers, but um It doesn't it's not it's not the, the bulk extreme, of their, like what for, Farnsworth, it, Mercy or Birmingham Marion is. Yeah. But But what a win. What a win in that one for and, Lake Orion. And you did, I think you did mention this, but that is the first OAA Volleyball D1 championship? OAA or, State Championship D1, D2, at the whole league. Anything. At the whole league. Wow. I wouldn't have expected that. That was the first one. And they beat a very good Rockford team. Yes. They beat a very good Rockford team in four games. Yep. Um, Rockford, of course, um, as mentioned, Lake Orion's nemesis. <laughs> and as of late, when you look at football... <laughs> Yeah. Um, and when you look at volleyball, of course, the 11 state final come to mind um, when Lake Orion um, got swept by Rock for yeah. three games. Yeah. This so. this team had a different mindset, though, man. It's like it was one of those, even you mentioned it at the beginning of the season. You go, it's is it is this really the team that you would have expected to do this? You know, the way some of the Lake Orion teams have developed over the years. He's like, not really. Yo, but there's something. They had that, some traits that reminded me of the 2011. Yes, season. yeah, there, and we, we saw last year uh, their shortcomings were just self-inflicted. Yeah, problems. injuries. Well, well, injuries. Injuries. Hap- well, injuries were big, but I'm just saying, like self-inflicted wounds. Like, uh, what what I notice of the team over the last couple of years is that when they get in a roll, watch out. Yep, they'll, they'll steamroll you. But if there's a nugget of doubt, and like they can get up into uh, like a lot of unforced errors on their serves. And we, I saw it against multiple teams, even teams that are inferior uh, to Lake Orion over the years, that they would, ha- you know, start rolling. And then these really just lack of focus type of things. This team was laser focused from day one. They were laser focused from day one, and didn't I didn't see the errors we saw in the past. I think this group had a mission. You know what I mean? And after the loss of Stony Creek, um, oh, re- yeah, you know they they picked themselves back up and um, just. Went on a, they won a lot of tournaments. Yes. They won a lot. I mean, like, um, they went to Kettering, beat Clarkston, team that gave them a lot of fits in the state, in the, in the final. Yep. In the district final. Regional final, beat Sony Creek, team that beat them earlier in the year. Yep. Um, went in the quarterfinal, knocked off Flushing, um, swept Flushing. Blew their um, doors off, yeah. Um, it, and Flushing had a really good outside hitter, Matty Morrison. Yeah. Really good outsider, and Lake Orion just used their balance to shut them down. Yeah, it, it's um, and then what a course, run! I and mean, then, just and then Mercy, then Fire Temple's Mercy, <laughs> um, and then of course Rockford. Um, Rockford was that final hurdle for this um, program to overcome. Yep. So now, where do you think this puts Coach Tony Scavarda at? Where do you think this puts him at? Well, I mean, <clears throat> you take a state title. He, he's he's here for the long haul. He's done a great job. He's, you know, when you change coaches, how long has he been in, in the hell now? He's been in the program, I believe. Because I remember been, the, the change came he was, like, JV, surprise. he was a JV coach, um, and then he took over for Ross Talbot. Yes. Um, I got to remember the years on my – Has he been there five? Five years. Five yeah. years or so? Yep. Right? And there hasn't been a drop-off. You know, you go, no. oh, sometimes you see new coaches come in, but it's – 
it's someone from within. It's uh, it's it's like you say, the homegrown guy, the guy that's been with the travel and with the with all this stuff and developing these girls, and it just it came through. And something I, I just, it keeps echoing my mind, too, coming back to different conversations we've had from the different seasons, is that who do you play during the regular season matters. Yep, it you does. Know, it's not just your league play. And volleyball's a little different because you're out and you're playing tournaments you're playing all over all the place. The but you can select which tournament you're going to play. And Lake Orion always seems to play them top-tier tournaments, and you're going up against these top-tier teams. Top-tier and you're teams be ex- Class A, Class B. You're exposed to the best of the best you are. all year long. You are. And this year, Lake Orion did a number on a lot of those top teams. They had a couple losses and, you know, had a slight slide there, you know, like you said, with some injuries, but it was never major. But it's who you play. So when you get to the Rockfords or you get to the semifinals, oh, the Mercies. Mercies. Or Marion's, you know what I mean? Marion, Marion yeah, you don't, you're not shocked. No. You're used to that level of play. And I think that's what playing that type of schedule does you yeah. know playing all the Saturday tournaments um it gets for you years. ready it gets you ready for yeah. years it gets you ready to play those type of teams yeah. you know think of all the nail biters those that senior class of Lake Orion's been through you know just that the level of competition that they are exposed to year in and year out and it it can only toughen you right and, and it toughen this group yep, out yep and this it toughen tough this mindset group out. yeah i mean Everything had to come together for this group to make it possible. Right. It lot, had yeah. to come together. Well, and, you, and you mentioned, too, um, you want to call it a break for Lake Orion, the injury, the key injury to the Libero. The Shields, yeah. Yeah, it was – you read that and you go, oh, that's tough. But you go going, things happen during things the course of competition. Things happen during the course of competition. You know what I mean? And yeah. for the Marlins, they had to adjust in mm-hmm. that semifinal matchup. And especially if you said it was the fifth game. And it was the fifth game. <laughs> Tough time to adjust. It was going to be difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, when you look at next year in the volleyball ranks, the OA, Lake Orion loses a lot. A lot, yes. Um, could this be the year that a Stony Creek or a Clarkston might make a run? Stony Creek has shown themselves more than adequate. Stony Creek's a young team. Young. And they got a lot coming back. Case yep. Rayton's going to be coming back. Clarkston going to be another team to keep an eye on, of course, by Claire Nowicki. Yep. Um, Bloopy Hills, Alexa Rousseau's back. I mean, Lake Orion, they're going to have their cut off from they want to repeat. Uh, repeating is difficult. It's very I mean, difficult. Unless you, you're you winning with a nice mix of... Uh, Blend of youth and experience. Correct. If you've got the, the sophomores, juniors, seniors blended in there, you know, all the time... And you're finding great success, like semifinals, state runs, or whatever quarters. Um, it's difficult because usually the senior laden team, the one that is the road yeah. tested, battle tested, those are the ones that usually yeah, get it done. They usually get it done, and usually, and that's what happened here with Lake Orion. Absolutely, um, fantastic, fantastic run for Lake yep. Orion. Yep. Let's go to a um, let's go to another team that won a state title. Yeah, and that was girls swimming. Um, didn't see that one coming, did you? Rochester Adams taking home a um, Division One, cha- Division Two championship at Oakland University, kind of in their backyard. Um, yeah, that's Oakland. I University. didn't even think of that. That's great. See yeah. home taking second place. Um, yeah, uh, between here, I get to the stats here for the MHSAA. Yeah, it was at OU. Great pool over there. Um, and I know a lot of these swimmers know that pool, mm-hmm. right? If you're in, if you're in the USS swimming, right. so you're swimming there a lot. So it's a familiar, it's not unknown to them, right? Mm-hmm. So conditions always help. Being oh, familiar with the conditions, does help. right? It does help. Rochester Adams, 250 points. Un- amazing. Lord. Uh, see home again, second place, uh, 220. That was close, man. That is, that's one race. 30 two, points. two races, 30 two points. Race, That's 30 two. points. So a first place individual uh, sw- swimming event, just so our listeners know, is uh, I think it's 20 points. So you get first place. That's 20 points right out of the gate. So that's how close it was uh, between first and second place. Uh, I don't think we had anybody else uh, rolling around there. You go to old Dreadnoughts. We were 11th. Go Dreads, yep. go. <laughs> and uh, other than that, it was – I don't see anybody of note uh, – some teams, I'm surprised to see they had some uh, scoring in there, some smaller schools. But, yeah, congratulations to the Highlanders. To, yeah, man. And the Maples great, for having a good time. year. I didn't go through. Groves the re- took ninth. Uh, you said Groves took ninth? 
Uh, let's. Oh yeah, they're in here. Let's see. Yeah, Groves, yeah, Groves was ninth. ninth yeah. So three top ten teams. OAA D two. Congratulations to the three Man. teams there taking top awesome. ten. Um, the red. I mean, in the um division one, of course. Um, the top finisher there, I believe, was F- Farmington slash Harrison taking third. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, Mercy, Farmington Hills Mercy they was the it. state champ at 211 points. Tells you how good Adams was mm-hmm. at 250. And the D1 gets 211. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Farmington says Harrison took third. Third, yes. Har- uh, Harrison, yep, 199 points. Uh, Lake Orion was 17th. Stoney uh, was 15th. Stoney was 15th, yeah, 50 points. So they had a couple, uh. Individuals looks like rolling in that one. Um, Clarkson twenty first. Uh, yes, Clarkson was twenty first. Good memory, Sam. Oxford was 29th. and I'm trying to look on the other side of the docket here. Rochester, twenty fourth. So strong uh, showing for the OAA D one and D two. Strong at showing. Stamey. Strong and, showing. Uh, for the it's OAA. too bad. I, I did. If I would have known that in advance. I could have dug up some of the uh, the top finishes. I know uh, Clara Bossi from Lake Warren was a uh, state runner-up in the 100 meters. Yep. And uh, I I don't have time to dig it up. I don't want to take up too much yeah. of the time here. But but so congratulations to that se- the senior from Lake Orion um, going on to going on swimming, to swimming. Uh, in college for sure. Uh, D1, I'm sure. She's just fantastic. The whole Abasi and, and Coach Abasi for Lake Orion just – Great job with that program in Lake Orion. But, uh, yeah, congratulations to the OE uh, Swimmers. Yep. All right, now we're going to take a break here. Um, we're going to talk some football recap here on OA Now. This is Lake Orion's own, the local voice. Call ON TV and get on air 248 393 1060. Let your voice be heard. Internet radio for all. Call ON TV and get on air. Music. Weather. Sports. And you. Me? Yes, you. You're listening to The Local Voice. This is The Local Voice, where you can listen to your favorite classic rock songs, as well as podcasts created by ONTV and its volunteers. If you're looking for a high school sports update show, we have OAA Now. If you want to hear about some great movies, we have Movies for Dumb Guys. You can also create your own podcast by taking a course with us. For more information, call 248-393-1060. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termine here with Ian Locke here. Hey. Uh, we got a lot of recaps here to talk about from football. Of course, as we mentioned earlier in the intro, um, one team is in the state final. Yep. Another team had a Big really surprise. tough block. Um, <laughs> let's talk about, let's, let's go to Groves first. Yeah, yeah. Um, they lost 28 not in the Warren DSL. Oh. Very similar school, Very similar to what happened against Oak Park. Um, I thought it would be a little closer. Yeah, I thought that too, but then seeing Warren, what Warren DSL did was shut Groves down to yeah. less than 100 yards. Yeah. Um, less than 100 less yards. Less than 100 yards. Very similar what happened in the Oak Park game. Wow. Very similar what they did against Oak Park. Um, the difference in that game was the Pilots' defense, they forced them um, two interceptions. One led to a touchdown. The other one led to a touchdown. Um, it was... It, was going to be a difficult task for Groves anyway against Warren DSL. Yeah. Well, we, we knew that going in, but we thought, hey, maybe. Maybe. You know what I mean? I thought Groves would have a chance to win that one. You know, um, and they did. I mean, going to Hazel Park, um, it was going to be a tough task for them, but Warren DSL just proved why they are the defending Division Two state champions. Yeah. yeah. I mean... <laughs> And and they have a good chance of doing it again. They got Muskegon Mona Shores in that one. Mm. I mean, they just they beat Midland pretty good the other day. Midland was Midland man. Was not they bad. were they were trucking some points up on the scoreboard. Well, Groves is the same thing. They were trucking up points, yeah. so they ran to Warren DSL. They put up they put up like fifty. They put fifty three against Warren DSL. Uh, I don't guess Boney Franklin last yeah. week. Yeah. Um. They put up um. They put up some gaudy numbers, but I mean, like they put up nearly forty against Birmingham Brother Rice, but. Still, 
to get shut out like this yeah. kind of really shocking. But, hey, it was a good year for him. I mean. Well, he started he, off 0-2, yeah. won 10 straight. That's cra- That's fantastic, right? Yep. They you won know, 10 straight. To be able to turn around like that. I mean, we've seen teams who have done the opposite. Win 10 in a row, right? And then you lose the rest. Kind of reminds <laughs> me of somebody that um we talked we've about last it. year in basketball. Season. Yes. Not going to name names. No, no. <laughs> um, but, but, it, but it's good to see the opposite happen, mm-hmm. you know? But um, for Groves, they turned it around this year, finished ten and three. They are a senior heavy team. They do lose a ton of talent, particularly on defense. But they lose Khalil Dossie, who's heading to Harvard next year. Ah, so it'd be very interesting to see what happens next Harvard. year. Harvard. Yep, Harvard. <laughs> um, let's go from the Division Two match to Division One game at Okemos. Um, yeah, you saw this coming. I didn't. You know, people are gonna ask me. Sammy, you are a complete <laughs> moron picking against Clarkson. No, well, I didn't say that. No, no, no. You other but, but Clarkson beat <laughs> Celine 21-3 at Okemos. Wasn't much of a game. Um, yeah, well, the, the thing is, is... I said this last week. They don't make mistakes. No, they don't hurt themselves. They don't hurt themselves. Yeah. And that's what happened here. They don't hurt themselves. Yeah. I mean, Clarkson had two four and two four down stops. And at, Celine had scoring issues. They only scored. They didn't score much against Rockford. Had to survive 13-12. They couldn't score against Clarkson's defense. Clarkson's defense has only allowed 20 points the whole the whole playoffs. 20 points. Really? Really. Wow. Um, so <laughs> Like I said, like I said last week, until they give me a reason to vote against them, or I, I, I'm all in. They outrush the Hornets two forty two twenty four to fifty eight. Wow, wow, that's insane. Yeah, that's and that's uh, you know insane. ball control, killing the clock, in control, just in control. They were in control that game, and they showed it. Now, I think they're going to have a very tough time this week in the state final when they play Chippewa Valley. I've seen yeah. Chippewa Valley. They are legit. Yes. They are for real. Scott Merch has done a really nice job of that team. Um, they got a quarterback in Tommy Schuster, four-year starter. Got You got Bunning there, great wide receiver. Yeah. Drew Ellis is really – David Ellis is really – Started to take over that running back position by committee. They also have they also have a couple good runners as well. Yeah, I mean their offensive Balanced, line dude. is very Balanced. good. Their defense is good, and they play in one of the toughest conferences in the state of Michigan, the yes. Comerica Conference Red Division. Yes, <laughs> and Chippewa Valley hammered, destroyed, made Belleville look bad. Twenty eight sixteen at Troy Athens last week. Yeah, um, Belleville had a lot of Division one recruits. When you look at players like Julian Barnett, Devontae Dobbs, um, both of them going to Michigan State next year. Um, when you look at previewing this matchup, looking at Clarkston and Chippewa Valley, Chippewa Valley has is more athletic than Clarkston. I think so. They are. Because of they have a quarterback who has a ton of experience, but Clarkson's going to say, well, they might remind us of Lapeer because Lapeer had a four-year starting quarterback in Brody Apple. Mm-hmm. And um, and um, Triple Off Valley's got a three-year quarterback in, um, in um, Tommy Schuster. So all you got to do is just cover up their wide receivers, cover up their game, just play their game. Yeah, That's if um, Kurt Richardson's saying to their defense right now. Think it's going to be three to two? No. <laughs> I think Chippewa Valley is going to score a lot. Really? Against Clarkson. I mean. That's what yes, we thought with Lapeer, too. Now, yes, Chippewa Valley. Now, yes, Chippewa Valley is going to have to deal with, um, with um, Rocco Splinter. They're going to have to deal with him. But I think they have enough linemen to do that. They have enough linemen and enough experience to do that. Um, When I look at the matchup. On the defensive side of the ball for, for Chippewa Valley against yeah. Clarkson, 
I mean, Clarkson, all Jake Jensen has to do is he's going to have to make some plays in this matchup. He's going to have to. Um, and he's been a perfect game manager for two games now. For two straight games, he's been a perfect game manager. Yeah. But I think now, if Chippewa Valley knows they're going to have to shut down their two running backs, Jake Ballette and um, Jake Hansetter, they shut them down and force Clarkson to throw, that could be a problem. Now, I know Clarkson's got two very good receivers in Josh Luther and John John and um, Connor Donahue, mm-hmm. but... This is not Chippewa Valley is a whole other animal. The only team that I could think of that Chippewa Valley played that was familiar with Clarkson is Lake Orion because Lake Orion ah. played them a couple years ago. But that's they, a while back. They I played mean, them two years ago. Yeah. They played them. They played them not that like was, this that year, was but the, they played uh, last year. That was the first or second game of the State, year. Yeah, yeah, Wayne State. Yeah. But and a couple of them played at Chippewa Valley. So when I look at this matchup. On paper, everything's going to favor Chippewa Valley against Clarkson. But Clarkson's got the experience on their side. They've been here before. Yes. They have. When's the last time Chippewa Valley's been to the two Chippewa Ford Valley Field? has not been to Ford Field in about 20 years. Okay. Near or maybe longer. Okay. But. And Clarkson? Clarkson, we know they've been there. A lot. A lot. <laughs> and, A lot. and not only there, but winning. Yeah, and winning it. I think this is a different animal for Clarkson. It could because be because when you look at Chip, when you look at the teams they beat, they beat Celine, they beat yeah. Nobody Detroit Catholic Central, and then of course um, who had the hardest road? Who I think had the hardest uh-huh. road? Chippewa Valley by far, because they had to go by um, they had to get by Dearborn Fortson. They had to get by Belleville, and they had to get by um, Macomb, Dakota, and Utica Eisner. Yeah. Those are not easy teams. Now, I know Clarkson had to get by Lake Orion, um, Utica, I mean, Lakeland. Lakeland, I think, was very good. Then they had to go to Lapeer, Lapeer. win them, win there at thought, Lapeer. We thought that was going to be a big test. We thought that. Well, it ended up being Wasn't. a big test, I mean, but um, Clarkson's defense came to play that game. Oh, heck yeah. And then against Celine. So yeah. if I had to say who had a tougher road, either Clarkson or Chippewa Valley, I would say Chippewa Valley by far. Um, In this game, I think special teams are a huge factor as well. Yes. Being fact, it's in an inside dome. Yes. Could be a huge factor here. Who has the kicker? I know Clarkson's got the kicker. Clarkson has, I, I gave Clarkson the edge in special teams. Offensively, I would give the edge to Chippewa Valley. Defensively, I give the edge to Clarkson. Really? Mm-hmm. So in this game here, my proje- I, who do you got winning this game? <laughs> like I said. You're going Clarkson? Until they show me a reason to say no, I'm, I'm with the Wolves. I'm with the Wolves. <clears throat> They've been there too many times. They've been there so often, and they handle themselves so well under those bright lights, if you will, right? And they take away the hardware. It, you know, it, it's, in a, it's the mindset of the program, right? The team usually is the embodiment of the coach, right? It's his, his attitude, the way he handles himself. He, you know, it's projected onto the team. And this team, mentally, rock solid. They know exactly what they're doing. Who picked them to do this? That was even the question, I think, at Media a Day. A lot of people picked Detroit Cast Tech to win it. Yes, and like at, at OAA Media Day. Yeah. And, and what did Coach Who would say? Who thought Clarkson, yeah. He goes, nobody thought we'd do it last year. Nobody thought we'd do it last and, year. Well, he says, well, new quarterback, right? New said, quarterback. You got a new quarterback. And that hardly ever happens. He goes, well, they said that uh, last year, too. But Nate Yavali. Like, you're right. And as soon as I heard that and you see, start seeing what, what they've been doing from week one – on, coach is right. Why would I even question it? You know what? You know, don't I know experience him. matters here. Oh yeah, experience matters here. I think Chippewa Valley is going to be coming in a little nervous. The first quarter is always, but adrenaline city. But I thought this over. Think they'll settle in and take care of business. 
I think Clarkson's taking home their fourth state title in six years. Oh, he said it. I think they're <laughs> taking home their fourth state title in six he years. He said it. Here's why. Experience matters. Experience yes. matters. And look at the OA champions. OA's been, look at the champions. Booby Hills in tennis. Um, Adams in swimming and diving. And girls swimming and diving. Lake Orion and girls volleyball. Cross country. Cross country. <laughs> Clarkston is Clarkston Truck cross Lotus. country. You know what? Just give, I think if the OA can prove itself superior mighty in the in the entire state of Michigan, they win another state football title. Yeah. Give me Clarkson. Yeah. Give me Clarkson. And if that happens, what? A crazy what, seven months? Yeah. Or five what? months for the league? Well, that, but I'm thinking like back to for Clarkson in the athletic department there mm-hmm. at, at Clarkson High School. Yep. Basketball, right? Yep. Potentially, well, the cross country for cross sure. Cross country. Potentially. Another football, football title. Crazy. I mean, that's a crazy haul. Insane. Just insane. Yeah. I mean, the OA as a whole. Yes. Wasn't there a tennis floating around, right? Yeah, Blue Hills. Blue Hills tennis. Hills. Yeah. Blue yeah. Hills tennis took home the state title. I mean, um, crazy. Amazing. It's just crazy. Makes doing this show fun, easy. It does. Something to talk about. Positive, always something positive to talk about. <laughs> it does. All right, now we're gonna take a break here. Um, let's then we'll go talk to, about um, something talk that's about not boys positive. Basketball. <laughs> You're on our way now. Oh, you got me early. Hang on. Yeah, I did get you. <laughs> Please remember that CFL bulbs, you know, those curly, energy-efficient light bulbs everybody is using to save electricity, shouldn't be thrown away in your trash. Neither should batteries or home medical sharps. You can check with your local community to see where they can be recycled. Some retailers will allow you to bring them in for recycling. You can also order simple kits online that allow you to collect your recyclables and simply mail them away to be properly recycled. This green tip was brought to you by your friends at Waste Management. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termini here with Ian Locke. Hey. Um, some very interesting news. Um, let's go to boys basketball now. Um, when you look at um, the Detroit Renaissance <laughs> saga, it just doesn't stop. You know, now this time. As Nick positive as Mc- we were talking at that last segment, this is equally this is as negative. Nuts. I mean, like when you look at. It's um, a soap opera. It, it is. I mean, when you look at, of course. Nick McKay wrote a really good article. Um, just, and it just, and <laughs> he said the hiring, the, hire, the firing of Vito Jordan, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And now it looks like this was premeditated, according to Nick McKay. Yeah. Because um, what happens? Oh, there's emails, and they always come out. They always come out. Um, Barana Strogner, the, um, New principal at Detroit Renaissance. Yeah. Came over from Burma. There's an OA connection. She was an assistant principal at Seaholm. Um, gave the um, gave the job. I mean, she showed, according to um, McKay's article, there was a series of emails between the deputy superintendent, Arana Wright, and other school administrators. They said Stronger showed a determination to hire Mark White as the new basketball coach. Or Vito Jordan. Is this... <laughs> and they said there was a deliberate attempt to make the process clean. This was trying, not clean. Trying to clean it up. Trying to clean up. This was not clean. Yeah. They had an outcome in mind, and then they went backwards to try to make it legit. This was not clean. No. I mean, I guess this he, is a coup d'etat. <laughs> this is a coup. And the crazy thing is the kids love their coach. They love Vito. They loved him. And then, hear this to end it all off. Stronger and Wright agreed to create an administrative position at Detroit Renaissance to have Mark White that would pay paid him over $72,000 yeah. and addition to his coaching salary. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. My and, goodness. I mean, and the <laughs> twisted bit is there's supposedly some sort of personal connection between the administrator and the coach that they wanted to bring in, right? They're romantically involved. Yes. 
And some <laughs> of these emails, McKay did a really good job with this. Um, you know, and it said that um, they viewed Vito Jordan as collateral damage. <laughs> and that's and, what it um, said. That, Actually, use those words. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what um, he's. If you read it, I'm reading it right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading it right now. He said, in a sense, Jordan could be viewed simply as collateral damage because Strogner, either her own vow, her own accord, or under orders of the central office, was intent to hiring White as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Wow. As soon as possible. And then, like, there was an email between um, Strogner and, um, and um, I believe, the um, other lady I mentioned. Um, that they, um, there was an email that stated that, um, that they could hire him as quick as possible to get yeah. him approved and tested. Um, they, um, and that, see if they, if the, um, superintendent Nikolai Vini would approve the position. Signed off on it. Um, I mean, the thing that's ridiculous about the whole thing one, it's a bunch of adults being stupid yep. and saying, you know, and completely forgetting about the kids. Yeah. Right? I mean, they completely they, just tossed that aside. She wanted her man in there. Yeah. She wanted her man in there. Regardless, Regardless of. Regardless of who, who it was going to yeah. be at the expense of. Yeah. She vilified Vito Jordan. You know, Vito Jordan applied to be the head coach at Southfield. Didn't get the gig. She vilified this man. Yeah. I mean, use, we saw words that were used that said, well, uh, what was it? A program run, a, run amok on the academic side, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a variety of things like that. I'm like, How do you uh, know that? She didn't do an evaluation. Yeah. She did not do an evaluation yeah. of that program. Yeah. This was simply a coup d'etat. It's crazy. It's crazy. Bunch, I, I, bunch of adults getting together. And forgetting about the impact it has on the students. And, and packs on the, um, and, and, you know, <laughs> and this, she virtually did damage to that basketball program. She virtually did, you know. And I'm reading the emails right now, and I'm saying to myself, what is she doing here? What is she doing? She wanted, she wanted a person that she knows in position and you know she wasn't going to view Beto Jordan as part of her vision well not fairly not fairly um and, and one thing you know did they have to go through this mess I mean one thing I found out is that these are all one-year contracts correct right right all coaching contracts for the most part the are one year Detroit Public School, yes, yes they're one year right so I mean you didn't have to do this it could have just been your contract is up. We're not renewing you. But they didn't do that. But he had a written contract with the old administration. So it was already signed and then – so, th yeah, okay. If that's the case, he was already brought in for the next year. How did he lose his lawsuit? Or is it still ongoing? Well, the litigation part's still, still ongoing. Going? But – but I, I just see it. It's like a bunch of adults being stupid, you know, and then not even thinking about the kids. And I even saw it was a Channel 7 uh, Sports had an interview with the kids, and the parents are, like, up in arms just saying, what happened? We don't want to play unless – and they were supposed to have a great team, right? They I were mean, supposed to have one of the right? top teams in the state of Michigan. They're loaded with talent. I mean, and some, the seniors, they made them yeah. go through interviews and all that. I mean, like, the parents were unhappy. <laughs> Carlton McCaskill was not happy. Um, you know, I don't know if he's playing or not. I don't think he is. Um. Yeah, that's the details that kind of got lost after. I mean, Mark the White stepped started down. Getting Mark White stepped down. Um, and it cost him his River Rouge job. Yeah. And then John White, who was his, who was an assistant at Southfield Christian, ended up was named the head coach. So I'm curious to see how they adjust to yeah. John White. But what a mess! I mean, you you hope the kids stick together. And we talked about that then. It's you know back when we heard this, and that's like if the kids we stick don't together, know how this this principal is doing right now. Could she 
I think this whole mess, if the John, if the um, John White hire fails her here, yeah, she has to be held accountable. She has to be held accountable. Um, if the school community ro- rose up against Strogner, <laughs> pitchforks and pitch, yeah, pitchforks <laughs> and all that, storm the castle. It would not surprise me at the end of the year. Veranda Strogner is out at Detroit Renaissance. It would not surprise me at all. And I know at the bold statement, but because of everything that's gone on, you had a state championship caliber boys basketball team. And she messed it up. She messed that whole program up. But it, it goes beyond just wrecking a team it's protocol like proper treatment of individuals you know and you know i don't have all the facts and we no, don't have them all we don't have and, them all you know we we see one side you go how did that information get out to the press why is that out well, and other information what, not? What, 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 she didn't even do an evaluation of the voice <laughs> program she just said okay i want my man in there that's what she did that's what nick mckay's saying that, that's what the optics say that's what the optics is saying yeah now, the fact that Strongner doesn't want to talk to press, we certainly like to get her side of the story. Well, it, it, I'm sure the school district said, be quiet. This is being litigated. So usually the parties that are involved, you, you button up, unless it's the, uh, the aggrieved. You know, usually they'll speak up. But what a mess. And it could have been avoided. It, didn't, this could have been wholly avoided. You didn't need to. Yeah. You didn't even need to go that route. Well, no. <laughs> Um, let's go to um, my preview for boys basketball now. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're I, about 51. Okay. Um, you can take a look at my blog at sammysemicolonterminal.blogspot.com. I have the previews for boys and girls basketball. Up, um, boys basketball, um, the blue division, as mentioned, um, Ferndale, obviously, with their hire of Juan Rickman yeah. coming over to East English Village Prep. Interesting. And the four transfers that four. came over there. <laughs> this again? And um, Oy. but if there's one team I think I give a couple teams that give Ferndale problems, for sure are Royal Oak, Pontiac, and Oxford. I think those three teams are going to give Ferndale a lot of trouble. I think Ferndale is going to make a great run in Division Two this year for boys basketball, but those three teams could give Ferndale big trouble. Is Royal Oak because their defensive first coach in their defensive first team coached by Aaron Smith. Um, um, Pontiac, their athleticism in Oxford, well coached under Steve Laidlaw, got a lot of experience back. So that's my early indication. The blue, the white, you know, I still think it's either gonna be Adams or Farmington that takes over that one and that division. Avondale's a dark horse team to watch. Um, Southfield's another one to keep an eye on, yeah. but Adams, when healthy. And they have a emerging point card. Um, get used to the name Gunner Walt Gunner Walters. Get used to that name. Gunner, what a basketball name. Yep, yep. He and then you have Ethan Emerson as well. Two very solid guards there. Um, they will dribble, drive, penetrate, score. Yeah. Um, Farmington, another one to keep an eye on. Um, those are gonna be. That's my thoughts on the white and the red. It's the Wild Wild West. Um. <laughs> You got Clarkston, West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, Oak Park. Um, you also got Troy, who could who have a conversation with Brody Parker. But I think the top four, as mentioned, um, have a great chance of possibly winning the um, Red this year. Yeah. I think they do. Now, the favorite, I think, has to be Clarkson. Still, even, even? with the, even with Tim Wasilk there. And the uh, all those seniors that they lost? Right. But I still think West Bloomfield will be solid as well. Um Oak Park and Malik Carr, Lake Orion, if they can find any sort of point guard play, will be all right this year. Because they lost a lot of points. They lost Jamie Lewis. That's that's going to be a key loss for them. Um, so we'll see what happens to them going forward. Yeah. Um, now, you said you saw a scrimmage? I did. At the, um, I saw a couple of these teams play at the um, Birmingham Detroit Country Day scrimmage. Um, I saw Lake Orion play. Good, bad, and ugly for them. <laughs> um, Adams. They're a little bit walking wounded right now. Oh, but a team to watch out already? for. At, at, I mean, a team to watch out for is Stony Creek. I really like this Cougar team. Um, 
Steve Nargrove's got that team going in the right direction. Um, I think that when you look at Stony Creek, um, they don't have a lot of flashy names. Yeah. That, but they do get the job done as a collective unit. And that group over there, and I'm taking Road and Sheldon Road, that is a collective unit over there at Stony Creek. That That is a team that could be a wild card factor at Stony Creek. I think they'll be a middle of the pack team, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do make a move to the upper echelon, you know, of the white division right now. Yeah. But Stony Creek, they're a work in progress. I really like that team. They're going to be a team worth watching. Were there any shuffling of the divisions? Teams moving up, moving down, sliding? Lake Orion's up from the blue to the red, as mentioned. Um, um, Salfie went down from the red to the white. Okay. Um, Farmington went up from the blue to the white. Rochester's up from the blue to the white. Okay. Um, Ox well, went down from white to blue. Um, Sealand went down from white to blue. Um, and okay. that's basically a shuffling. Yeah, because we saw um, some teams take advantage of that. You know, you move down and good things happen. I'm saying Ferndale's going to take full advantage of that. Yeah. Um, especially because with their new coach named Juan Rickman and the um, and the four transfers, that that's going to be a big impact right there for them. Yeah. Um, Oxford could be another one. We're watching. I think they'll take advantage of that. Um, and I also but, mentioned Hayes Park moved down from the red to the blue. They they virtually are decimated. Yeah. Um, girls basketball. We'll talk more about that next week. Mm-hmm. So um, cool. so hey, I wanted to have one correction just before mm-hmm. we sign off here, Sam. Uh, I mentioned that uh, Clara Bossi was uh, second in the hundred meter free. It was in the fifty free. Okay. And we got to give it up to Harris uh, Farmington Harrison's. Uh, Ashley uh, Turek, she was a state champion in the 50 free, set a state record. Beautiful. And um, the senior is a two-time defender uh, in that uh, defending champ. Really good. Uh, in that, uh, like I say, her second year of winning that event. So another OAA uh, state title, individual title for uh, Harrison there on with uh, Turek. But, yeah, just wanted to correct that up there. Okay. Um, my final thoughts this week. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. I um, wish everybody the best of luck, especially Clarkson this weekend. Yeah, in the state championship. Eat um, lots of turkey. Eat lots of turkey. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving yeah. And um, see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you all. Thanks, Sam. All you now is brought to you by Sammy Terramina. The views on this show are his and his alone. like to make your own podcast give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060 classes are constantly enrolling they're only $25 what we'll probably start up our classes at the start of the new year uh, Owen TV is kind of in that holiday mode now but give us a call if you're interested again 248-393-1060 we'll see you next week on OA Now see ya